What's up, sons? It's Blind Riding with Silent Attack once again, and we have finally arrived at QuakeCon 2018, but that's not quite the topic of this video. Today, we're going to talk about the performance for Madden 19 on the PC, as it's the first Madden to come out on PC in a long time, or at all. Without further ado, let's get into it. To start things off, the test bench is going to be an ASRock Z370 SLI with an i3-8350K overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. It is on an air cooler. Now it does have 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum clocked at 3200 megahertz, a 256 gigabyte SATA M.2 generic drive, and a Corsair CX750M. So once we start taking a look at the benchmarks itself and we bounce between an RX 580 and a GTX 1066 gigabyte, the 580 was an eight gigabyte. And I did play around with it on the RX 64, but I have other problems going on with the 64. So we didn't use that for a, a closed testing scenario. However, it's very obvious that the game is GPU bound with the 8350K. Uh, all cores, even in like 1080p resolution all the way through 4K, doesn't seem to utilize more than 50% of the core across, well, all four cores. So it does actually seem to have some good optimization for CPU utilization. It's not heavy on one core where one core is up at 100% and the rest are not being utilized. So that's actually kind of a positive. It does mean that the game is GPU bound, which is going to be kind of a problem once we start looking at some things. It has very poor min FPS, primarily in scenes that are not during gameplay, however. If I throw up a chart here, which I'll be showing you guys, this is the time between frames chart. So each dot basically is connected with a line so you guys can get a better representation of it. But each dot would represent a frame. And the closer to 16 milliseconds, so probably on this chart around that 15 millisecond bar, is where you want to be to be well above 60 FPS or 60 frames per second. Now you'll notice near the end, it seems to get a little bit more consistent. However, still kind of inconsistent. That's beside the point. The reason it's running a little bit more consistent is because that was during a long play so you know in football you have plays right you know, they hike the ball you run the ball if the play is short then what happens is Madden goes into its little quick cutscene and then it goes into choosing the plays well during those sections of the game it has very very poor performance in frame rate and you can see that by those large spikes now it gets a little bit better when you're actually doing a play there and so I just thought it would be interesting to point that out that being said, if we take a look at the initial performance between DirectX 12 and DirectX 11, the DirectX 11 actually performs a little bit worse on the average frame rate. However, it comes out ahead in the 0.1% lows. So I'm going to recommend the DX11 here for Madden 19. I think it's going to run a lot better for you. And then finally, like I'd like to do with all of these games is throw up the percent change in FPS by setting. Surprisingly, a lot of the settings have no change at all. And I thought there was going to be some more settings that had more of an impact on frame rate when I was watching some of the early side-by-sides with the max versus the min on some of the larger YouTube channels. However, they never really go into that much detail. Here I can tell you guys that basically you can turn everything up to max except for two settings. Those two settings are going to be depth of field, which will kind of net you a 20% change in frame rate and of course crowd quality which is going to net you a 17 percent change in frame rate and that's going to be a pretty big bump you're talking about just between those two getting a 40 percent bump in fps so let's say you were trying to get from 50 FPS to 60 FPS, you'd want a 20% change in FPS. And at that point, you would basically just need to turn one of these settings off and you would get it. Now, I recommend turning the, basically both of them off. If you're a PC player, you're probably not gonna be fond of the depth of field as it is. Now, the next step to that, of course, is that crowd qualities, give or take, you know, it's not gonna break immersion. Most of the games that we played growing up as sports games had really bad crowd graphics. 
I think that it's not gonna hurt you at all to get that extra 20 FPS. Feel free to crank everything all the way up. The final note is that if you guys want to play basically 4K resolution, you're gonna have no troubles even with the GTX 1066 gigabyte and the RX 588 gigabyte, as long as you turn those two settings off. It seems to run pretty much, at least during the gameplay sessions, above 60 FPS the entire time, definitely dropping below that in certain sections where it's loading stuff, even if you're on an NVMe drive, so. There you go. So that kind of wraps up pretty much everything that I can think of for Madden 19. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I do realize it's a little bit shorter than I usually do them. However, I think we've covered everything. There was only really two settings to talk about, depth of field and crowd quality, and they're self-explanatory if you guys ever do any camera work, then you're very aware of what depth of field is. And if you basically, know what a crowd is in NFL and you know what crowd quality is so there wasn't any elaborate explanation of what those settings do I have nothing for you the neatest thing I guess would be the the, the CPU utilization I'm gonna get to QuakeCon and have some fun uh, I'm gonna edit this on the floor from the R9 Nano build we just completed you can watch that up here in the corner or this corner I'm all turned around I'm not in my office I'll see you next Tuesday